Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. Today I have my first place Team Wars green cooler deck profile that I wanted to share with you guys. Just wanted to bring you guys an updated cooler list. That's the main reason why I'm doing this video because I had it on the Patreon for a while and I wanted to kind of share with you guys what I am playing as far as green cooler is concerned. So with that being said, if you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. And if you guys want to help support the channel, there are many ways down in the description you can do so as always. But today, guys, if you want to buy any of the cards you see in today's video or any trading cards for that matter use my link to tcg player it really does help me out a lot and i really really do appreciate it anyways let's get into the video so again this is for the team war event in philly my team and i my teammate danny and mike ended up taking first place i played green cooler our team comp was danny playing bulma the same deck he played to first place in the actual regional and mike played blue baby so why did i pick cooler well i think cooler is actually a really really good deck and i was talking about that a lot in the patreon articles leading up which i actually did two different deck profiles in the patreon itself but yeah i think cooler is a very good deck my personal gripe with it though is that i don't want to take it into a main event where sideboard is a thing whether that's sideboard best of one or best of three because i personally don't want to deal with being debored all day or other anti-hang control cards that like green and yellow have for example i just don't want to deal with it the deck is able to play around it to a degree and i mentioned this in the meta recap at the uh, end of last week where amani one of the one of the players at the top of the cooler last weekend a great player in the game he played cooler and he mentioned that you can play around Deborah by either using your hand ripping effects when your opponent's tapped out or putting them in a situation where um, you kind of force them to Deborah by activating a card ripping effect and that might tap them out. So now they may be vulnerable to your Frieza unison or other forms of damage you might be able to put out. So just my two cents and my, my thoughts after talking with Imani about the deck. I still think it's very good, but again, this is my list for sideboard best of one or really just best of one in general because Team Wars was a best of one event. Let's get right into it. Leaders, self-explanatory. Either When you attack, you either draw or play a unison. That's your choice. Honestly, I really do mostly draw the card and just play the unison via energy unless I'm trying to be aggressive because you're still going to get a draw when you play a unison over an old unison but your hand will actually increase in size if you allow your leader to draw the card instead of playing the unison but again when i want to be aggressive i use the leader's ability to play more unisons to get more attacks and save on energy that's my philosophy with it anyways for our unison lineup of course we have four demigras some lists don't play for this and i'm very baffled why this honestly is the unison you want to start the game with because it'll go up to two markers going into your opponent's next turn but your opponent can't remove markers from it practically they're going to be attacking into it giving you life which is exactly what you want so you can get your empower started off then of course we have four copies of frieza galactic dynasty we have four copies of salsa coolers armored squadron four copies of knees so these are my other one cost unisons i am not playing uh dore i just don't think that dore himself is valuable enough and i don't think that the one drop cooler is valuable enough i do play the one drop cooler we'll see that in just a second but i want to keep this deck to 52 cards like it is right now and I don't think Dore, uh, you know, fitting four of that in the deck is really going to benefit me all that much. So turn one, I really want to start with either Demigra or Knees. And then, of course, for the rest of the game, you're playing Freezes on offense. You're playing Salsas on defense, uh, ideally. But you can also play it on offense to pop a battle card if you need to. And there's some other unisons we'll play throughout the game that you'll see in just a bit. But yeah, Dore for me, I don't find it necessary. Yes, it is a true plus one. It does actually allow you to increase your hand size. But again, I just don't think the value the card offers is all that great. Then we have three copies of Golden Freeze and Newfound Might. Three is all you need. This is our win condition. This card is really, really good at sneaking out games when your opponent is tapped out in awkward situations. But I do have to say, though, this card loses kind of hard to the blocker negates, whether it's homicidal clones, testing the opposition. You play this card, you wipe their board. That's really good. But um, then if they just blocker negate, they can stop both attacks for one card and one life, essentially, which is pretty rough but i mean you want to back this up with some other threats whether that's your leader swing overrun that we'll see later and uh, other situations where your opponent doesn't have the blocker negate this is going to be a really really solid win con one thing i do want to mention though make you guys very aware of is that you want to be very careful about this card against blue decks where they have the ability to use golden avenger great ape baby whether they can pay five for it or they have used the minus five on the baby parasite unison be very mindful of this card getting counter countered and i guess you know same advice goes out to you in the yellow matchup make sure you be very careful of that so sometimes you want to use this defensively for the counter attack sometimes you want to just play it offensively and go in and then again try to back it up with some other things that we'll see later three copies of cooler sibling cruelty 
I think three is a good number here. Um, you can't really play it until about turn three. It really depends how you get the flow of unisons going. You can sometimes play it on two, um, but you're usually only playing two to three a game. So I think three is totally fine. If it was if it was something we could play like turn one or turn two, I'd probably play four, but three has been good for me. Three cooler mightiest sibling in space. Used to be a four of because theoretically it's a good turn one play, but honestly, I really just want Demi Gras on one. Cooler on one actually does kind of set you back a bit. And it's nice that it becomes a 15k attacker most of the time, but it just falls prey to so many random counterplays like Videl counterplay, Yamcha counterplay. So many random things just like pop it because it's a one drop without protection. So I think three is totally fine. I have not missed it at, uh, at three. I've not missed the fourth copy. Four copies of Freeze Charismatic Villain, of course, in a green deck with Unisons, and two copies of Fusamasu, Deity's Wrath. This is so good in this deck. I mean, it's one of your value engines where you can just constantly take cards out of the opponent's hand, but this is definitely volatile against red because red is one of the only things that can get around indestructible by minusing power. So you do want to be very cognizant of that, but against every other matchup, this card is absolutely incredible. Even yellow, like yes, yellow can use Vegeta's Final Flash, negate its skills, and remove it, but you're still making them jump through that hoop to do that. So I would play this in just about any matchup that isn't red, to be honest. Four copies of Dormant, I think it's fine. I mean, three is okay too, I guess. Uh, this format's not ultra aggressive, but you do want to make sure you have it when you need it. So I would just go with four. Four copies of Defending Father Paragus. Luckily, there's no like necessary super combo for this deck that isn't Paragus. Paragus is the best green super combo. And uh, you can just ditch all the dead cards in your hand that you don't need, like extra copies of Dormant. Typically, extra unisons are not dead because our leader can combo them on himself or on our unison attacks. So that's pretty good. But yeah, sometimes you'll have some extra, extra cards in your hand and Paragus can filter those out pretty nicely. One copy of Champa just for that game ending pressure. I'm a big fan of one Champa. Some people will play two because I think it's more consistent. I mean, they're right. It is more consistent, but I just like one. If I see it, cool. I don't want to see it too early because this is a green deck and I don't really want to have to like warp it with Paragus or pitch it with something else. I want to be able to just use it at the end of the game to go for that last swing. And that's kind of what I was talking about before where your opponent can use a blocker negate to stop Golden Freeze and Newfound Might. If you swing that twice, you exhaust their blocker negate. Now you have your leader swing. Maybe they're at two life. Drop the Champa, dump. You're going to be in pretty good shape. One copy of Majin Buu, Kabito Kai Absorbed. In my opinion, this is the best SCR to play with this deck. Other ones do work, though. Of course, you can play Invader's Vow. You can play Heroine's Lineage if you're on a budget. You can play uh, the Counter Counter Majin Buu. Remember, though, it doesn't work on your leader, but still pretty decent with the other attackers in the deck. But I think this card's so good because there are so many powerful unisons in this format. So you'll use this during your opponent's turn, stop all their battle cards from attacking, and then you'll uh, sacrifice your own unison, which will allow your leader to draw a card, and you'll steal their unison interrupting their game plan like using this against a blue boo unison i actually use this against a machika bora unison in teams uh, and that was super super value i then minus four the machika bora to um steal their nine drop sin that was so good um against gt i also use against gt this was very very good against gt because once you take their unison uh and they don't have another copy to play and they don't have one in their drop area to replay because you took it to your board um you really put them in a bad spot so i think this scr is so so good for this deck Two copies of Dodoria. This one I want to talk about a fair bit. This is a counterplay that requires you to have a unison in play to stop the play of a two or less. This is very, very good. There are so many good floodgates as hits. Oceanus, Robotic Repost, the Red Pan in the GT deck. This hits so many good things. But honestly, I wish this had been Focus Breakthrough because while this is a battle card and Focus Breakthrough is an extra card, you're going to always be at four life whenever you want because your leader self awakens. And Focus Breakthrough hitting three or less is very, very relevant. I actually had some trouble against the SS3 reboot deck that I played against in teams because I couldn't do anything to his Gohan Baby's minions. I couldn't do anything to stop those from entering play and floodgating me out. That was my only loss in teams. Luckily, my teammates won their other two games and kind of carried me there. But um, yeah, that was a problem. So I would probably swap the Doria out for Focus Breakthrough. Just want to let you guys know about that minor change. Two Homicidal Clones. I know two is very, very weird. Uh, I honestly just can't find the space in the deck for any more. I would like to play a third. I don't think you need four because we have Knees as a negate. We have Dormant and uh, the third Homicidal Clones would be nice. Maybe we could find one slot for that. Or honestly, maybe even bumping it up to 50, 53 cards wouldn't be all that bad one goku spirit bomb unleashed okay so as we get through the rest of this you're gonna see a lot of one ofs 
this card can be clutch in key situations it's kind of like another copy of champa where you just play it to the board you just spear boost a ton of markers off like if you have a five marker knees this thing is going to be absolutely huge going in for double strike of course it's a battle card susceptible to counterplay so you want to be mindful of that but there were a fair amount of games where i've been able to kill people with this card it's so so good real quick guys moving over to the other side of the screen because i noticed i was actually blocking some cards we'll get through the rest of the profile though so we have two copies of vados pre-fight preparation so i do want to mention that i'm not playing the weiss counterpart to this card that a lot of lists play I personally don't like the Weiss very much for a few reasons, one of which it makes you more susceptible to Devor Ritual at hand and cards like that, which isn't really a concern in pure best of one because people aren't gonna have Deboras and cards like that. But the other reason I don't like it is because it's a nine, it's a nine K, so it doesn't really attack for damage. And Vados has that same problem, but one problem with this deck is that you do actually struggle a bit with like quick spot removal when you need it. Charismatic Villain is an incredibly powerful card, but sometimes there are boss monsters in the format like Ultra Mastery, like the Nine Drop Cell in Gamma, and like the Nine Drop Sin in the Sin matchup, where you just need to be able to kill them without having to invest all your energy into Golden Freeze and Newfound Might. So that's where Vado shines. I liked it quite a bit. You just play it, pop something, replace it, play a new unison, maybe a Salsa during your opponent's turn. I think it's very, very good in the deck. One copy of Vestas Trunk Solitary Guardian. I like this overrun quite a bit because it comes in as a 25k attacker and replaces itself. I typically wait to play this card till after I know I'm done playing cooler sibling cruelties because this is like the only card in our deck that has like a drop barrier requirement, right? But I like Trunks a lot because again, it's 25k, it's a big attacker on its own. And when we have a lot of unisons in our hand, we can't always combo high on battle card attacks because our leader only, let, only lets us combo unisons on his own attacks or our unison attacks. So the fact this guy comes in as a big attacker, I do very much like. Then we have one copy of Go On Hidden Might, one copy of Vegeta Resolute Agent of Destruction, and one copy of Koitsukai. So these are just some text that I wanted to play in pure best of one. Gohan giving us that one-off barrier spot removal for maybe like the Yellow Trunks matchup, maybe the um, the Yellow Piccolo matchup, any random barrier matchups. We also have Vegeta as a barrier board wipe, so that'd be very relevant in the Yellow Piccolo matchup if you happen to play against it. But same deal, this can be good against the Yellow Trunks deck. Just anything with a wide board of barrier. That's why I wanted to include the one copy. And the one Koitsukai. The reason I played the one Koitsukai was going back to the Dodoria thing. I knew that I would have a bit of a hard time against decks that played uh, higher cost floodgates. So I did want to have the one Koitsukai. And it was kind of clutch for me, especially in testing this deck. It was pretty good. So this is my 52 card list, guys. Anyways, um, this is, again, this is the first place list I played for teams. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.